Silence, infidel! I do not wish to be Sega anymore. I just want to be Ubisoft. Welcome, creatures of all ages. This is Osmus awesome Tarkas here with the one and only Assassin's Creed. There's actually a story behind this video. I was originally going to make a video on Venice using the Medieval 1180 Rome 2 mod. But the mod is constantly being reworked, and I'm waiting on a few updates that can make the Venice campaign more playable before I get footage. In the meantime, I decided to play an old classic. I wasn't even in high school when this game came out. I watched this gameplay on G4 on Comcast On Demand. But now, it's not only a classic, it's a relic of a forgotten time. The game on Steam started every few seconds when I started, so it was unplayable. Turns out that the reason is because the game was looking for an Ubisoft server, which, being used for an old game, is now defunct. Combine that with Ubisoft's announcement of its full embrace of gaming as a service, with its subscription model where gamers don't own their games. This game is a remnant of a period in history when people actually bought their own games on discs that they owned forever. I'm able to play this game normally by disconnecting my internet and playing offline. Either way, as some old boomers like me remember, this game is about the Third Crusade and the Hashishins. You can't really talk about this period without discussing religion just a little, but I'll try to be as unbiased as I can. Also, I'm assuming that most of the people watching this know the bare minimum about the Third Crusade. That the Christians and Muslims were fighting over the Levant, and on one side was Saladin, and on the other was King Richard of England. If you didn't know that, now you do. Nothing is true. Everything is permitted. Understand these words. It matters not how we complete our task, only that it's done. So, for our hero, we have an edgelord. Note that everyone else has an Arabic or European accent, but this guy has an... Is he even American, or is it just some general edgy accent? I love how this is supposed to have open-ended missions, but here at the beginning I'm just expected to hop down and run up to this guy instead of working around him. Anyways, this guy is, forgive me if I butcher the pronunciation, Wobe du Sable. I can't find that many references to him in the translations of medieval crusader texts that I'm reading, but he was definitely one of the Grand Masters of the Knights Templar. Wikipedia claims that he came from Anjou and fought in the Crusades along with King Richard, and also that he was elected as Grand Master just after he joined. The name Hashashin actually comes from the drug Hashish, or Hash. Most of what we know about the Assassins comes from their Crusader and Arab enemies. Christian writers like Marco Polo claimed that the Assassins were drug-intoxicated brutes. In reality, they were part of a Shia Muslim sect called the Nizari Ismailis. The Ismailis were a small sect of the Shia that separated from the rest after the sixth Shia Imam died and his son, Ismail, was denied succession. The Nizari Ismailis were a sect within that which formed after the Ismaili Fatimid Caliphate of Egypt had a succession crisis where the eighth Caliph's son, Nizar, was executed, after which his supporters went underground. The formal sect was started by a da'i named Hassan al Saba. He was one of the most conservative and ascetic imams of his time, exiling or even killing followers for drinking alcohol and playing music. Under him, the position of imam was practically like the Pope, where he alone could decide what was right and wrong unerringly and finally, as opposed to the rational individual. The sect's beliefs were, of course, reformed over time, gradually becoming more liberal. The Nizari Ismailis are actually still around today, many of whom live in the West. Their current leader, the fourth Aga Khan, has British and Portuguese citizenship. This is Masyaf Castle, historically the capital of the Syrian Nizari Emirate. In 1176, the famous Ayyubid Sultan Saladin besieged the castle after the assassins targeted him twice. However, despite having the upper hand, Saladin unexpectedly called the siege off and called a truce. To this day, nobody knows why. Also, I keep hearing about this guy named Desmond. Who the fuck is Desmond? Is he an edgelord too? Trouble master. This guy is based on a real figure named Rashid ad-Din Sinan, probably the most famous assassin. More specifically, he was one of the assassins known as Fidai, or self-sacrificer, who actually organized and carried out killings and subterfuge. The violent activities of the Fidai didn't have much to do with modern standards of morality, but rather self-defense. 
The Nizari Ismailis were persecuted in their population centers in Syria, which the Crusaders and the Ibid Sultanate were fighting over, and the much larger Seljuk Sultanate in Persia, so those factions became the main targets for assassination. Honestly, I do like the fact that Altair, despite his badass exterior, is presented as a somewhat flawed character who needs to learn from his mistakes. You don't always see that in action games. Sinan definitely led Masyaf during its height of power. Under him, the Masyaf assassins became an efficient intelligence organization and killing machine. It was during his tenure that Saladin's siege of the castle was repelled. Here we are, at Damascus. At this point, Damascus was Saladin's seat of power. His previous capital, Cairo, was in the more wealthy Egypt, but Damascus was more important as a stronghold to keep the Jihad going. Wait, were we supposed to have a new guy? And what's with the red belt? Uh, I'm a communist? Oh cool, us too. Under Saladin's rule, although probably not because of his actions as much as his just being there, Damascus became so important that the previous brick architecture was replaced by carefully carved blocks of stone. It made for some very impressive architecture, though I doubt every structure had a conveniently placed carved straw next to it. Pointing out that straw can't break a hundred foot high fall has probably been done to death. Let's get to the fun part already. I'm sorry, I don't have anything. What year do you think this is? Nobody carries cash. Now go away and... Let's try that again. No bloodstains on my clothes? Of course not. That's a 299 DLC. We're going to Acre next. Acre was the primary port for the Crusaders throughout their history. The Siege of Acre, which happened a little before the game's events, was a turning point in the Third Crusade when, I kid you not, an army of Christians besieged the Muslim occupied city, Saladin's army besieged the besiegers, and that siege was broken from the outside by more arriving crusaders, led by the famous Richard of England and Philip of France, who ultimately took the city, although Saladin and his men got away. The crusaders were known for their brutality towards the Muslims and Jews living in the Levant, but surprisingly, they left a few of the mosques in Acre intact. Not sure if we'll see any of them, though. As of now, Acre is the seat of power of the Order of St. John, also known as the Knights Hospitaller. A popular myth claimed that they originated with a hospital from the time of Jesus, but the official hospital from which the order came was probably founded in Muslim-occupied Jerusalem in the mid-11th century by one Gerard de Martigue, who was given charge of the new chartered institute by Pope Paschal II. As the name suggests, their primary purpose was to care for the sick and poor among pilgrims and residents of the Crusader states, something they were so devoted to that they considered mendicants to be their proprietors. After Gerard died and the master ship passed to Raimund of Puy, the mission began to at least coexist with forays into warfare and wealth accumulation. Big ups to Ubisoft, by the way, for having the guards wear gambesons instead of mail. The Crusader Knights were probably more well equipped than your average foot soldier, but metal is expensive, and at this point in history, not everyone is going to be covered in it. Also, big ups for them having archers who can to some degree smack you in close combat. This needs to happen more often. We are now killing, once again bear with me, Garnier de Napes. IRL, he was less known for taking care of the sick as much as his feats in war. At the Battle of Arsuf, he and his knights were protecting the Crusader rear column, which was being harassed by Muslim cavalry and arrows. He insisted that King Richard end the battle immediately by charging the Saracens, and when the king refused, the master of the Hospitallers, along with one other knight commander, charged anyways, pulling the rest of the army into the fight with them and ultimately winning the battle. I know the idea of the assassins' robes is so that they can disguise themselves as scholars and clerics, but I'm still the only one wearing white. And the only one with a 12th century sword. Or maybe I'm not a monk. I'm a crazy lunatic in this loony bin we call the Levant, crawling on the ceiling like that lady from Hereditary. That still doesn't explain the sword. This man isn't black! You took these people against their will. Yes. What little will there was for them to have. I still find it interesting that Altair is a bias towards freedom of will, 
while the whole point of Nizari Ismailism, at least as Saba dictated, was that the only purpose of an individual's free will was to guide him towards obeying the Imam, who's the only one who knew what was right. Yours is not to ask, but act, Altair. Like that. There are plants, Altair. Herbs from distant lands that can cause a man to take leave of his senses. So great are the pleasures it brings, men may even become enslaved by it. Finally here, Jerusalem, the most culturally contested city in the most culturally contested strip of land in the world. A little after the events of the game in the 13th century, crusaders will start drawing maps with Jerusalem as the center of the entire universe. At this point, Saladin controls Jerusalem. Four years prior, in 1187, he was able to take the city from the Crusader States after winning the Battle of Hadin. The city was then completely depopulated of European descended Catholics, most of whom were spared and deported in exchange for a ransom, with some of those who were unable to pay being enslaved. Compared to the prior atrocities of the Crusaders, this was generous, and even Saladin's Christian enemies recognized this. Although this mercy was largely thanks to the crusader lord Balian of Iblin, who threatened to have his troops destroy their own city and its inhabitants and fight to the death unless Saladin played nice. Christians were allowed to continue their pilgrimages into the city, and the Christians living outside the city in Saladin's new domain were treated fairly as long as they paid the jizya, the tax on non-Muslims. However, jurisdiction over the Christian community was handed almost entirely to the Eastern Roman Orthodox Church, with the Roman Emperor Isaac Angelus going as far as to congratulate Saladin for his victory. The three main cities the game chooses as venues are pretty good choices thematically. You have Damascus, a Muslim city, then Acre, now controlled by Christians, and finally Jerusalem, which is home to both, the crossroads of the two faiths. Now I bet you're wondering, where are the Jews? That's the neat part. There aren't any. In 1099, when the Crusaders originally captured the city, they killed or enslaved every Muslim and Jew living inside. Now that the city is in Ayyubid hands, Jews might be slowly coming back, but at this point, the diaspora has more or less come to pass. Sorry, couldn't resist. You pay for this! Yeah! What's shaking, queen? Belly dancing originated in pre-Christian Egypt, and dance was never completely forbidden in the Muslim world. Outfits as erotic as this are probably an invention of European Orientalism, though, and dancers in the medieval Middle East were generally fully covered. Now this is what I call a hotbed of sin. The word alcohol actually comes from the Arabic alcohol, a chemical used as eyeshadow. Mm -hmm. Quran aside, the people of medieval Muslim states rarely ever unanimously rejected booze, and although the devout Saladin did officially ban it, even he couldn't get rid of it completely. <laughs> Up next, we are shanking William of Montferrat. At this point in history, in 1191, William was an old man of 76 years, and had been involved in both the Second and Third Crusades. He was present at the Battle of Hadin, and was captured along with the other Crusaders. <laughs> oh, yeah. A great favor indeed. Now Richard the Lionheart. Note that he isn't speaking with a traditional English accent. This is because the real Richard could not speak proper English. Most of his life and almost all his reign was spent in either continental Europe, especially France, or on crusade. He was also descended from the Norman nobility that took over England after the conquest of William I, for whom the speaking language was a bastard fusion of English and French. In history, the most important crusader who was assassinated was actually not William, but his son, Conrad. In 1192, Conrad of Montferrat was killed by a pair of assassins disguised as monks, who were killed soon after. Sinan claimed responsibility for the killing, and he definitely had a motive, since Conrad had captured and looted an Azari Ismaili ship. But historians still wonder if they were also doing the killing on another crusader's behalf. Maybe even Richard himself. Okay, this is a little too much, even if the glitches are intentional due to this whole experience being a memory from a the forgotten anime. part of Middle Eastern history because there is nobody named Desmond. Non nobis, domine non nobis. Templars, now you see the true reach of Robert de Sade. 
The Knights Templar, just like the Freemasons and the Illuminati, are easy punching bags in historical fiction. They were originally founded a little after the First Crusade by the French knight Hugo de Peon to escort and protect Christian pilgrims to the Holy Land. But before long, a few of them started providing their famous shock cavalry support to Crusader forces, and eventually they grew fabulously wealthy due to tax exemptions and donations of money, land, and manpower from across Europe. After the money started rolling in, the Templars started engaging in financial services. They established one of the first formal checking systems by giving pilgrims letters of credit in exchange for deposits of funds at the beginning of their journeys, which could be redeemed for equal amounts in the Holy Land. Eventually, their activities expanded to manufacturing, trading, and cash crop farming across Christendom, making them one of the world's first multinational corporations. There are a bunch of landmarks in this game, and I don't feel like visiting them all, but I'm going to hit a few of the important ones. This is the Dome of the Rock, the center of the Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Temple Mount, possibly the holiest place in all Abrahamic faiths. It's on top of the ruins of the Second Temple of Jerusalem, but it's also believed by Muslims to be the site of Muhammad's night journey, in which he miraculously moved between Mecca and the site within a single night. Though I doubt the Prophet would approve a murderous edgelord using it as a jungle gym. Well, you know what they say, stealth is optional. This is the Umayyad Mosque. Across history, multiple deities have been worshipped on the site, though all of them have had something to do with the sky. The Arameans worshipped their rain god Hadad, who the Romans equated with Jupiter when they arrived. When the city was Christianized, it became dedicated to John the Baptist, whose head was buried there according to legend. After the Muslims arrived and took over, it was finally converted into a grand mosque by the Umayyad Caliph Al-Walid I, intending for it to be the crown jewel of the city, or a mosque the equal of which was never designed by anyone before me or anyone after me. Damascus continued to change hands up until the present, and today is the only surviving landmark from Umayyad rule in the city. Damn. I guess you can have too much hash. Our next target is Ibn Jubair, and him being a book burner is ironic since the real one was a writer and geographer who documented his travels across the Mediterranean from Muslim-occupied Spain to Mecca. The Teutonic Knights were actually founded just about now, in 1191, with the purpose of protecting pilgrims and caring for the sick, just like the Knights Hospitaller and Templar. But after the Third Crusade ended just a few years in, their operations shifted focus to defending Christendom against Eastern European pagans. Their military presence in Europe culminated with the push to convert the pagans of Lithuania, which proved to be their undoing when an alliance of Christian Lithuanians and Poles defeated them at the Battle of Grunwald. A big part of Acre by the sea is controlled by Venice. Venice and its navy played an essential role in the Crusades, and in exchange for their support, they got exclusive trade rights along with their own merchant quarters in coastal cities like Tyr and Acre. You know, with the assassins trained to kill with single strokes and do parkour, they could also have afforded to learn to swim. Finally, we have the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the holiest site in Christendom. Supposedly, Jesus was crucified and buried in the site, and it's certainly more likely to have been here than any other area. Early Christians carried out services in the area, and the local stone quarry had long been a popular site for tombs. When Emperor Constantine converted, he cleared out the temple to Venus that Hadrian had built there to spite Christians, and used material from said quarry to begin construction of the church. Hundreds of years later, in 1009, the Fatimid Caliph Al-Hakim demolished the original structure, but his successor, Al-Zahir, allowed it to be rebuilt with funds from Roman Emperor Constantine Monomachus. All this time, I never told you I was sorry. I do not accept your apology because you are not the same man who went with me into Solomon's temple. Perhaps if I had not been so envious of you, I would not have been so careless myself. As we share the glory of our victories, so too should we share the pain of our defeat. In this way, we grow closer. Thank you, brother. Alright, in all seriousness, I like Altair. Edge aside, he shows that you can go through a spiritual journey without being melodramatic about it. I will not take your life. You're free to go. All aboard the railway train! Seriously, how am I supposed to convince Saladin and Richard of the Templar's deceit if I have to keep killing their men? Change the world! My final message! Goodbye! Okay, let's try this again. Robert du Sable. 
I think I did better this time. Let this be decided by combat. Surely God will side with the one whose cause is righteous. A trial by combat. Let God decide who is right. The most famous of these is probably the last duel, when a French knight accused a squire of raping his wife. And in their duel, the knight both slew his foe and won the case. So I don't think God necessarily takes the side with the largest numbers. Being right isn't a popularity contest after all. The power of the Templars ultimately came to an end at the beginning of the 1300s, after the Mamluk Sultan pushed the Christians out of the Holy Land for good. King Philip IV didn't want to pay his debts to the order, and knowing this, Pope Clement IV, who was close friends with him and perhaps even his puppet, accused the Templars of heretical acts, including worshipping a pagan god named Baphomet, which is really just a bastardization of Mahomet, the French pronunciation of Mohammed. Either way, the Templars were disbanded and their assets seized. It wasn't Nine who found the treasure assassin. Not Nine, but Ten. It is your master, Al Mualim. No, let's be real. It makes sense. The whole idea of the game is that the Templars and the Assassins both want the same thing. The difference is, the Templars want to achieve peace by mind controlling people, and the Assassins want to find it through healthier means. Like backstabbing powerful people who totally won't just be replaced. Well fought, Assassin. It seems God favors your cause this day. God had nothing to do with it. I was the better fighter. Ah, uh, you may not believe in him, but it seems he believes in you. Red Sea was never parted. Water never turned to wine. It was not the machinations of Iris that spawned the Trojan War, but- Shut your bitch ass up! Well, that's Assassin's Creed. All in all, I liked this game. The combat is repetitive, and there's enough bugs to last a lifetime, but the cool protagonist, juicy stealth kills, and of course the interesting historical backdrop more than makes up for it. I definitely wouldn't mind playing more games in the series. Either way, thanks for watching. This video is a little rough around the edges, since it's just my second, and as you can see, I experimented with animation and cutting techniques, sound quality and volume, and French pronunciation throughout. Still, I hope you liked it. This is being released on the 27th of February, my birthday, and it would be a wonderful present if you could like, comment, subscribe, or dare you even say share. Also, you're now looking at my VTuber model, made by the one and only Daphne. I'm planning to debut on the 27th of May, so drop in if you can. Again, thanks for watching, and expect more to come. <laughs>